Hello and welcome to the second edition of MATC's Media Arts Technology and Community. I'm your host, Kyra Wright. Election day is fast upon us and we will either have our first female president or our first reality TV star president. On today's show, we will go to the South Side with Angelica Rocha. Our creative team will give us a funny political skit and we will learn all the new rules about drones with Warren. We have that and much more coming up on MATC's Media Arts Technology and Community. Hi, and thanks for joining us today on MATC's Media Arts and Technology. I'm your host, Kyra Wright. Every week in the program, we love to highlight our community portion, our wonderful neighborhoods in Milwaukee that celebrate the city's diversity. This week, Angelica Rocha is gonna take us over to the South Side to get a little bit of that Latino flavor. Located in the heart of Milwaukee's South Side, just off of Cesar Chavez Drive and Walker, El Rey has been serving Hispanics and other minority groups for decades. Founded by Ernesto Villarreal and his brother Gilberto in 1978, what started off as a small corner store has grown beyond what they could imagine. Restaurante, Blanca, de todo tipo de personas vienen a comprar. Principalmente porque fue la primera tienda que empezó con la comunidad latina en, el, en la comunidad, en el barrio de aquí. Y yo creo que igual como va creciendo la comunidad, va creciendo también lo que es el rey, porque igual puedes encontrar productos que no encuentras fácilmente en otros lados, productos especialmente de México, Centroamérica. Yo creo que eso es lo que beneficia mucho a las personas que venimos de otros países. Tengo un poquito más de 10 años trabajando con ellos. Ah, me tomé un poquito de un break, me salió un tiempo, pero ya volví otra vez. Sí, es, un, es algo que, como dice el lema de la tienda, que es como muy familiar. Entonces siento como que a pesar de que estás trabajando, conoces mucha gente, te vuelves amigos de mucha gente. Y sí, sí me gusta, es algo muy bueno. Fue en apoyo para la, este, en contra de las deportaciones lo que estaba haciendo con las leyes migratorias aquí en el país. Entonces sí, por primera vez en es, fue el pasado creo, donde el rey cerró las cuatro tiendas para que, el apoyo que todos los trabajadores fueran apoyar a la marcha. Fue algo histórico. Today, el rey employs over 325 people and 318 of them are minorities. Despite the changes through administration throughout the years, El Rey continues to stand for their community. Thanks, Angelica, and to all our friends at El Rey. All of that yummy Mexican food makes me hungry. Maybe I'll stop by there for lunch. And in today's show, if you don't know, tomorrow's election day, and we have some creative, funny debates from our team. So we're gonna take a look at who could possibly be the next president. Welcome, and thank you for joining us tonight for our fourth presidential debate. Tonight, we'll have a twist. This is a surprise debate and also a speed debate since election day is tomorrow and we need to keep you moving and informed. Now, without further ado, 
let's introduce our candidates. The Demo <laughs> Excuse me. The Democratic presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton, and the Republican presidential candidate, Donald Toupee, I mean Donald Trump. The Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump. There's pictures of me and you in 1993. Friends. I know your husband, Bill. Mm. We're, just, we're just playing off like it's wrestling. Okay. We say we hate each other, but in real life, we're best friends. Mr. Trump, we will start with you tonight. Our first question is, if you are elected to be president of the United States of America, will you continue the Celebrity Apprentice? Oh, yes. Very, very much so. It's going to be fantastic. Only, it will be Oval Office Celebrity Edition. It will be an overnight sensation, believe me. Mr. Trump. Would you like to tell us about your wall? Oh yes, I thought you were never going to ask. I'm going to erect a wall, a massive wall. It will happen almost overnight. Trust me folks, this wall will completely turn around this country completely restore our sovereignty, and completely impress the American people with my awesomeness. Secretary Clinton, since we're on the topic of media, have you heard of the Project Veritas action videos? Yes, Joe, I have. And I would like to say that these videos by James O'Keefe are absolutely and completely do not illustrate at all proof of voter fraud, election fraud, or illegal acts commissioned by myself, my campaign, and Americans for Change. It's just a video, not like the air emails to back them up. Secretary Clinton, we have seen during this election that there are points in which your personal views can often differ from those in which you release to the public. Can you give us any advantages to this tactic? Being president is about conflict resolution, as well as agreeing with American people. If you don't agree, sometimes the best thing to do is to change your views. That's what the American people need. Can I help you? Excuse me. Now my final question for you both is this. Do you believe that it's possible for our election to be stolen or rigged? I do not, Joe. The American election process is completely open, fair, and transparent. No one has ever stolen an election, and never will. Unless Trump wins, then the Russians definitely hack the election. Just like my emails. Thank you. Mr. Trump, Secretary Clinton, thank you very much for joining myself and the American people tonight. For M-A-T-C, I'm Joe Carini, and thank you for joining me. This election has been a lot of he said, she said, and back and forth and gossip. And if you're like me, I'm sure you can't wait until it's all over. Well, after tomorrow, your wish will be answered. Coming up next, we have two similar, but a little bit different student perspective stories. First, we're gonna talk to Tony, who's gonna talk about college transfers. And then Autumn is gonna give us some advice on leadership. Uh, a great advantage for our student who walked through outdoor at MHC, started their um, schooling here, especially their two years, uh, tackled down all their general studies um, and transfer to any four years. Uh, one, it saved them money. Uh, two, we have great professors, great uh, class. Our classroom are smaller um, and uh, great support for students. They uh, do transfer um, to majority of the UW system around um, the state of Wisconsin. We have uh, two different major transfer. We have uh, the program to program transfer, which MATC has agreement with many four-year colleges, uh, public as well as um, uh, private colleges. 
Um, so program to program means that the student who are in a particular program, let's say some business program or nursing program, uh, if they complete their program with the 70 or so credits, the entire 70 will transfer to UWM with a school that we have agreement with. Well, we have, um, that's the advantage of starting at MATC. We have a lot of field that, that the entire field, the entire program would transfer. Um, I mentioned um, earlier about program to program transfer. So um, we have um, a lot of program and um, I don't think we have enough time to name them all, but we have a lot of program that would, what we call program to program transfer. Again, if student, um, complete all their two-year degree here with us, the entire program will transfer to a four-year university without um, that university dissecting their course and selecting what transfer, what doesn't. Now the student have to make sure that the college they're going to have an agreement with us, MHC here, so that they don't lose any credit. As far as the general, as a broader transfer in itself, then uh, they would have to make sure that the receiving uh, institution will take the course, then it becomes more uh, complex. We have to look at course by course transfer instead of program to program. Well, I, um, I've been here long enough to, to know how students walk in and the, the, the challenges, the up and down for a transfer student. I would greatly advise that the first thing they get here is to get in contact with an advisor. Granted, it could be their, their, um, their counselor or their program advisor. Um, sit down, tell them what's your future plan so that we could uh, um, pave, so to speak, pave your way to the four-year university, making sure that you are taking the correct courses, making sure that you successfully complete those, those courses and they are, in fact, um, transferable. Student government for MATC's downtown campus hosted a leadership conference featuring motivational speaker Dr. Chris Earth. I go all around the country working with student leaders and corporate executives on how to increase their leadership development. I want to talk to you about where you are right now in your life and about where you want to get to, where you need to get to. My preference is work with college students. No offense to corporate people um, or adults, but sometimes we can be too stiffy and just too uptight. College students, I think, are still in the cuffs of like not taking themselves too seriously, but taking themselves seriously. Where? The first up is where? Where should you sit in the first day of class? Somebody? In the front, right? And send everybody in the back. Sit in the front. Love it. Let me ask y'all a question. Anybody ever heard of an area called the T in class? So the T is the area that sits across and straight down the middle. Studies have shown that students who sit in the T get two times better grades than students who don't. I'm a very different speaker. Um, you know, I work from the experiential learning paradigm. I'm very high energy all the time. So at my company, I am looking for an ID leader. So my question is, are all y'all leaders? And they gonna say? Yes. yes. So folks can come into my session, you know, and feeling really low. I guarantee by the time they leave, they're like, whoa, that dude was crazy. I mean, that's always my intention. Student government exercise their leadership skills while talking to students about their thoughts on this year's election. Diana Heron of Student Government gives us insight on what leadership is. Leadership is being teachable, but also being able to teach other people. Because being teachable requires you to learn some things. I see my best work as a leader when I'm teaching. Great leaders know how to remain integral, but they also know how to stay true to who they are. I'm a firm believer, you just can't do it by yourself. So you gotta have people with you and working with you. Um, so training someone else and training other people to do this work would be great. But if you wanna be a person who's focused, who's committed, who is driven by success, who absolutely wants to change their life and change the lives of others, then you can be that person too.
As you can see, this show loves to highlight some of the many ways that our students make this school so great. Coming up next is Warren with our e-production, and he will be talking to us about drones. And then we have our special guest of the week, Dr. Richard Bushlaki. 2016, there are over 600,000 drones in use. So with all this airborne technology, safety guidelines are necessary. This past summer, the Federal Aviation Administration introduced new rules for camera drone use. A few of them are, commercial and professional operators must be at least 16 years old and pass an aeronautics test every 24 months. Drones should only be flown during the daytime and you must be able to see your drone at all times. And unless approved by waiver, drones should remain under 400 feet, weigh less than 55 pounds, and stay under 100 miles per hour. And lastly, you shouldn't fly a drone over a crowded area. For more drone rules, check out www.faa.gov. So that's it for me this week. Catch me next time for the e-production minute. And now I'm joined with our special guest, Dr. Richard Pusilaki. Dr. Pusilaki, he is the Dean of the Media and Creative Arts Department. Talk to us about your journey here. We know that you're an alumnus, but talk to us, how did you get to your position and what are the great things that you can have our students look forward to? Um, when I was a student here at MATC a long time ago, I started my journey in the marketing program at MATC and I got really involved in the student activities, student programming, um, and sometimes you're life path takes you in a direction that you just never anticipated it would go. Um, I ended up coming back to MATC and working at MATC just about 25 years ago and not thinking that this was going to be where I was going to be for the rest of my career. Um, and it's been one great journey after another. Wow. What would you say has been your most exciting uh, improvements or developments in the campus over 20 years? Uh, oh my God, I think working with the Media and Creative Arts programs as well as other programs, we've been able to look at the programs, uh, modify the programs, working with the faculty, um, where the programs really, much like our, you know, our telecasting, our television and video production program and our e-production program, uh, we really have faculty who are able to take their skills of and knowledge from the industry and implement them in the curriculum that we provide to make sure that what we're teaching the students are skills that they can walk out of the door at MATC with their degree and um, get a, a job based upon the skills that are needed locally. And our faculty are superb when it comes to making sure that those skills and, and that match is met between employer and, and our graduates. Wow. So I know you've definitely seen some changes in media over the last 20 years. How would you say technology has really changed the media and creative arts department and the things that we're trying to do for our students here? I would think, um, I would I know that um, over my time here at MATC we've gone from a very analog world to a very digital world and one of the things that MATC has done um, a great job at is to making sure that what we're teaching students right now today is what they're going to be able to need when they walk out of here and it's the it's the technology that's being used in the industry um, if we didn't do that we'd be we'd be doing a disservice to our students in the industry um, I think the biggest change has been the, the digitization of media um, and social media um, and we've gone from a, a world that uh, was able to um, you know go from a uh, an analog world to a just in, it's a just in time world today where everybody wants content and information on demand um, and that's kind of the biggest change that I've seen and again I think we do a great job of making sure that that technology is here I mean whatever area and medium of creative arts that we're teaching to make sure that our students have a grasp of that and they're able to do that in the industry and what would you say to the student that's watching this that may be a freshman, undecided, and saying, media arts, that kind of sounds interesting. What core curriculum courses do you think they need to get out of the way so they can start focusing really on what it is that they want to do? I think they really have to have a good understanding of what is it exactly that they want to do. Media and creative arts is a really big world, so I think they really need to kind of understand um, you know, on my career path at MATC, you're not going to believe this, but I initially signed up for tele, uh, television and video production. Okay. Uh, but then I realized that I really wanted to be on the front end of the camera, 
uh, not the back end. So my journey took a little different path because I really had to figure out what it is I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, and I think the same thing in the students that are in the media and creative arts programs, you know, whether it's television or video production, whether it's e-production, whether they're interested in uh, music, whether they're interested in audio production, gaming and simulation, um, the photography. So I think they really have to, what is it that th they want to focus on? I mean, based upon where their interest is, um, to determine what path they want to go down. But I, I think you really have to have, um, in anything that you do, you have to have a drive for what you do, and you have to have that, have it in your gut that, yeah, this is, it's not a job when you come to work, it's this is what I really love to do. And once the students figure that out, I mean, sometimes students like myself, it takes you a little while to figure out exactly what you want to do when you grow up. And, you know, you may change things a couple times, but it all, it all works out. So you heard it here, parents, do not be upset if your child is still trying to figure out what it is that they want to do. So we have 30 seconds left, okay? Sure. We're going to go lightning speed. Okay. You tell me, because I want all the students to get to know you. Elmo or Big Bird? Elmo. Okay. <laughs> Chocolate chip cookies or Doritos? Oh, that's a tough one. Doritos. Okay. <laughs> and what is your favorite MPT show, MPTV show? Tracks you? Ahead. Wow, tracks ahead. Tracks I would never ahead. know that. Well, thank you so much. The students affectionately know you as Dr. Rick. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you can come back again and talk to us some more. Thank you. And that about does it for this week's show. We've had a wonderful addition from creative skits to taking a tour to the South Side to talking to our own Dr. Rick, who is the Dean of Media and Creative Arts. Join us again next week for Media Arts and Technology. We'll have much more in store for you. I'm your host, Kyra Wright. Have a great week, and we're over and out.